Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone to CSAM teaching section session. I am Assistant Pastor Prophet King. And the title of the message is Oh Christ Address to the Thirsty. Let us go to John chapter 7. Verses I'm going to start on with verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Where will he go that we shall not find him? And he go, will he go to the, go to the disperse among the Gentiles and teach? The Gentiles, what manner of saying is this? He said, you shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, there you cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He that believes on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But his but this spoke he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. That was, was John chapter 7, verses 35 to 38 39 30. I would, I'm coming from the the life of Christ The Jewish dispensation was covered, excuse me, was crowded with sacrifice, ordinance, and festivals. Most of these had a twofold reference, a literal, literally, literal one. Connected with the circumstances of their institution and a typical one referring to the Messiah and the blessings of the gospel. One of these feasts was called the Feast of Tabernacles. It was to last seven days. His de design, its design are fully 
described in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 39. Let's go there. To the Le Le Leviticus chapter 23, verse 39. Did you get that, Pastor Nicole? Can you read it? Because you'll get that before me. Leviticus 23, 39. 23, yeah, verse 39. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Keep going. Yeah, go and ahead. ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Yeah, okay. That's the seven days. They were to do the feast of the tabernacle. For seven days. And a lot of feasting going on there. A lot of eating. It seems the Jews had added to the ceremonies. For on the last great day of the feast. They were to the they were to the pool of Siloam and what's that? fetched water, a part of which they drank, and the rest they poured upon the altar in its remembrance of the water. Supplied unto them in the desert. Talking about the Israelites. When when they were thirsty. And there was no water. So Jesus told them to uh, Moses and Aaron to strike the rock. One time. But they struck it twice. Huh? And they couldn't go into the promised land. Because they disobeyed the orders of God. Okay, the speaker, Jesus stood, remember it was at the conclusion of this address that the officers turned, exclaimed, never a man spake as he, as Jesus Jesus spoke with authority, with power. When he spoke. And so the, the, the priest had sent the soldiers to take Jesus. But they, they didn't take it because they listened to the message that Jesus was speaking. And so they didn't take Jesus at that time because it wasn't his time. It wasn't his time to be taken. And they said, and the priest asked them, well, how come you didn't bring him? And he said, they said, never a man spoke as him. And the priest got mad with the soldiers and say, are you blind? Has he bewitched you or something like that? Okay. To the dignity of the speakers 
person, God, who at sun-dry times, some of these precious persons were to distinguish celebrity. Moses, Elijah, Samuel, Christ, Harboring, har, 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 harboring, but they were servants in God's house. But last of all, God spoke to us by His own co-equal and co consensus. Co Oh, consensus, consensual, K I A L on it. Consensual? Yeah, consensual son, a greater than Moses and Elijah and Samuel, one of whom John the Baptist truly said that the latchet of his shoes. He was not worthy to unloose. His infallibility and infinite knowledge, he knew all things. He could not err. He saw the circumstances and feelings of all his hearers, he knew what they required. His discourses were always, therefore, direct, observed, as we observe. His mod, mod of communication. Now, it was always. Tender and mm -hmm. gracious. Mm -hmm. A bruised reed. Thou art fair. Grace is poor. Grace and truth. It was plain and easy. He never dwelt in the Profound, never quoted one deep saying from the ancients, ancient of times, the elders, rather, the old, old elders. Um, to No glossing, gloss. no pompous terms. He simplified all he touched. He led the people to the garden. You know, that's the Garden of Gethsemane. The field, the sheepfold. And all the people were willing. They were willing to follow Jesus no matter where he, he went. If he went in the desert, they went in the desert. Hence the poor and the illiterate were instructed and delighted and the common people heard him gladly. It was always faithful and earnest. He never varied 
he never varnished over the conditions of any of his hearers. At any condition, whatever kind of sickness they had or, or sinful um, thing, whatever they sin, they did. Jesus knew all about it all. And the ones that was had uh, all kinds of diseases and need a healing, any kind of element, they got their healing just by looking on Jesus, some of them. Their faith, by faith, you have to have faith to get that kind of healing just by looking at a person and you get healed. Wow. Now, his address is to the thirsty. Appetites of the body are used to set forth the desires of the soul. We read of hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Thirst is an extremely painful and even fatal sensation. If not removed, this clearly exhibits the state of sinners. They are in a needy, wretched condition. Sin, like a fever, is burning up the soul. There is no comfort nor peace as such like the thirsty. They desire relief. Hence they go up and down saying, Who will show us any good? Now this wilderness world yields no pain with it yields yeah no pure refreshing stream its waters are all noxious 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 and foul Jesus announces to the thirsty water, let him come unto me and drink. Now by this water, we understood the gracious influences of his Holy Spirit. One, these lack water A sage, A S S U A G E. Thirst. These satisfy the soul, pain, and anxiety, and dread are removed. Now the soul. Explain, I have found the Messiah. I have found him of whom Moses referred to. It's, it revives, it refreshes, and strengthens the four fainting, dying souls drinks and lives because strong and joyful in Christ the author of 
his salvation. This is number three. That was number two. Like water, the grace and influences of the Spirit cleanses and purifies, removes pollution. I will sprinkle clean water, produces holy fruits. In Christ's address, the thirsty are invited to come to Christ for the water. One, Christ only can bestow it. He has the spirit. He obtained it. He bestows great importance in the world words. Let him come unto me. Two, to come to Christ is to believe in him, to receive him as the Son of God and the Savior of the world, to build upon him as such. Three, there is to be actual participation and drink. Apply to our souls the fullness of Christ's benefits and blessings. Come to the cross and look up to the fountain and plunge into it. To the table and eat. To the foundation and build. Observe the promise. Christ would give him the water of life. He will impart what he needs. Give him pardon, grace, pardon, grace, adopting grace sanctifying grace in one word salvation what what are the graces again um okay let me go back he will pardon, pardon grace adopting adoption adopting grace Sanctifying grace and one word, salvation. He would give him a full and abiding supply. This is the idea in the text and clearly ex expressed. John 4.14 4, Spirit shall be in him. John 4.14 4, But whosoever drink of the water that I should give him shall never thirst. Thirst. The water that I should give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting 
like. A young nigga. The grace imparted shall be useful and a blessing others out of his mist or heart shall flow. Piety is influential. God blesses a man that he may be a blessing. That he may be a blessing. Yes, when God blesses you with, with abundance of something, th that man is to share a portion of it to the poor. He's to give to the poor and needy. He's not supposed to hold it, hog it all for himself or herself. So he can be a blessing to somebody else. Freely given. Feel it freely you have received. Freely give. Amen. Christ gives us the water that springs up in us as a well freely. Right. Amen. And we are to share it with others because there are yeah. a lot of thirsty people out there. Amen. Amen to that. And poor in spirit. The converted soul says, Lord, what wouldest thou have me to do? What shall I render? Then the influence of godliness flows out. <sighs> He honors Christ, bringing others to Christ, talks of Christ, by the way. Okay. Can you repeat that? What? The converted soul says, what shall I render? And then what was next? Then the influence of godliness flows out. He honors Christ, brings others to Christ, talks of Christ by the way. Application. 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 Number one. Many of you have provided the truth of the text. Celebrate the praises of Christ. Number two. Urge sinners to come to Christ. Come now. Come just as you are. Come with the sinner's plea. Three, Christians be useful. Let your piety flow out. And this is the conclusion. It's the end of the, of the uh, teaching session. And I like to close in front. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for the saying of Jesus. If any man thirsts, oh God, there's so many thirsty souls out there. And some of them don't even know it, that they're thirsting for Christ. So I just pray, Lord, that you will lay it upon their hearts and their minds. 
To pick up the holy book, Bible, the holy book, and they be began to read in the New Testament about Christ, brothers Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and so on further on in the rest of the Bible. But, the, but they will get to know Jesus in by reading the word of God, yes, the yes. true living Bible. For the words of God, the words of Jesus, they are alive. Just like Jesus is alive today. Sat in, in his throne, in his father's throne, interceding for us right now. And I thank you, O oh Lord God, in Jesus' name, for the word and opening up my eyes that I may see. In yes, Jesus Lord. Christ's name, I pray. Thank you for opening my spiritual eyes to see. Yes, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.